Welcome to another episode of Why I Didn't, the mostly useless series where I tell you where I did not pursue a specific specialty. And in this episode, we're covering radiology. Now, if you do want a more useful, objective overview of radiology from an expert, unbiased, comprehensive overview, then check out the So You Want To Be A Radiologist video over on the Medical Insider channel right here and down in the description. You can consider this the opposite. This is my subjective, biased, and personal experience with the specialty. And if you're looking to supercharge your medical school or residency application, check out our brand new Ultimate Research course. Now with the nationwide changes in assessing candidates, research is growing and becoming more and more important. But if you're intimidated by research or you haven't been able to crank out as many publications as you'd like, then this course is designed for you. This is the culmination of Sean Anderson's, DePaul Patel's, and my own expertise into a single comprehensive resource. It covers the exact strategies that each of us used to crank out 60 plus publications, abstracts, and presentations each. That's right, over 180 combined. And this is all while we were balancing college and medical school. Use WID RADS for 20% off the course for a limited time. Now, let's dive into radiology. First up, what I liked. And the first thing is the subject matter relevance. As a radiologist, you'll spend a lot of your shifts reading images that come in from all over the hospital. So you get to see a wide variety of pathologies. You'll see a lot of the diseases that you learned about in med school. So you don't feel like you're limited to one specialty. Each day, there's a broad range of pathology, not just one thing or one organ system. RADS is intellectually stimulating because you're the physician that's using a lot of different things to figure out what's going on with the patient. You need to have an excellent base in anatomy to understand normal variations, as well as a strong understanding of pathophysiology to know why diseases present the way that they do on images. You're solving puzzles using the information that you've learned from med school and residency, plus the doctor's clinical notes about the patient and the images in front of you to figure out what's wrong. Without your expertise, it may take considerably longer for a doctor to come up with a diagnosis if they even manage to do so. This is one of the reasons why people call radiologists the doctor's doctor, since many doctors will refer to you for help. And you're essentially getting the theory of medicine without some of the practice. Now, some people view this as awesome since the practice of medicine certainly has its issues, which we'll get to shortly. Radiology is also one of the more tech heavy specialties. You get to combine medicine with state of the art technology, which is always evolving. Number two is that there's less administrative work. Radiologists work more pure clinical hours than some other specialties like internal medicine. In Why I Didn't Internal Medicine, right up here, I talk a little bit about not wanting to go into IM because of all the social work involved and all the extra administrative work like charting. And there's more to like about RADS over IM too. Like the fact that they don't obsess over sodium. Their body's full of it. I know how much you guys like sodium. Just stop, okay? We'll admit the patient. Yes. In radiology, you're mainly writing and dictating imaging reports. In other specialties, you're dealing with notes, insurance claims, social work, disposition, and a lot more. These aren't problems for radiologists, especially if you're working mostly in diagnostic radiology. But it's also not just about avoiding things that are unpleasant, but also feeling like the time you're spending at work is actually meaningful and relevant. And that's, that's huge in preventing burnout. A greater proportion of your time at work is actually productive and challenging your brain in a way that you trained. You don't feel drained thinking that you're wasting time and mental resources on random BS that isn't a good use of your energy. Number three, lifestyle. Radiology is one of the road specialties, which are traditionally known in the medical community for their relatively nicer lifestyles. The other three road specialties are ophthalmology, anesthesiology, and dermatology. But it's kind of an antiquated acronym because this doesn't necessarily mean that other specialties have poor lifestyles. There are other specialties where you can still enjoy a pretty nice lifestyle, and you can check those out over here in the best doctor lifestyle specialties video. Now, while a radiologist lifestyle isn't what it used to be, especially with the increasing load of images being ordered by providers, it still provides physicians with a good work-life balance. It's reasonable to expect working around 60 hours a week in residency, and definitely less than that as an attending. Of course, that's gonna vary based on your practice type and your location. Now, especially with teleradiology becoming more popular, radiologists can still get some hours in reading images at home. Compensation is also pretty good for the number of hours worked as well as the intensity of those hours. So Medscape's 2022 report placed radiology at $437,000, which places it near the upper quartile in terms of compensation across specialties. Number four, we got procedures. There are two main pathways you have as a radiologist and 
You usually decide which path you want to go into before residency because there are different ways to go into these specialties. The first is diagnostic radiology, which focuses on doing and reading images, and it's what you expect of a typical radiologist. The second is interventional radiology, which is procedure-based. You usually do more complex procedures that are minimally invasive using catheters and wires. Now this video is mostly talking about diagnostic radiology, but let me know with a comment if you want to see why I didn't for interventional radiology, or if you think that they're just too similar and I should move on to a separate specialty. Now for those who don't know, I personally love working with my hands, and that's part of the reason why I chose plastic surgery. And therefore, I'm gonna enjoy the procedural nature of IR because their procedures are super diverse. You get to do procedures all over the body. One day you could be doing a biopsy, treating cancer, or saving an ischemic limb. The variety can be a double-edged sword though, because sometimes you'll be taking cases from other specialties, and sometimes other specialties will try to give you their more difficult cases. For example, if a lung nodule is just a little bit challenging for a pulmonologist, they might decide to call IR instead, rather than trying to biopsy it themselves with a bronchoscopy. Of course, this is something that can happen, not a generalization of what usually does. Also, many procedures performed by IRs are vascular procedures, so you might be doing procedures that are otherwise done by vascular surgeons or interventional cardiologists, which sometimes causes turf wars. Now with diagnostic radiology, you're obviously not scratching that same procedural itch as with IR, and that would be a con for me. Next up is collaboration with colleagues. Now, while the patient interaction component is definitely substantially decreased, it's at least cool that you're on the phone speaking with physicians frequently, and sometimes they'll come to the reading room too, and you'll discuss their patients and the results of their exams. You're talking medicine all day, and you don't have to dumb down the technical terms because you're speaking with a fellow physician on the other end of the line. What's your favorite word? Non-specific. What's your second favorite word? Indeterminate. What word do the vast majority of doctors not understand? Oh, stat, obviously. Impressive. I heard a story of a radiologist who read a chest CT for PE in a patient who had leg swelling and shortness of breath. There was no PE, and the radiologist felt pretty confident that it was likely sarcoidosis, based on you know, the clinical notes and imaging. So he called the referring clinician and asked if it was typical DVT swelling, or was it red, painful, bumpy, possibly bilateral, more pointing towards erythema nodosum. Turns out, Radiologist was right, and they got the patient properly diagnosed. That's pretty badass, and it shows some of the great aspects of radiology, right? So you're making a true difference in patient care. You're working with fellow physicians as colleagues and collaborators to best serve patients, and you're solving clinical puzzles using the various pieces of information that are available to you. Now keep in mind that instances like these aren't necessarily common, but it's what I view as one of the more beautiful aspects of the specialty. Now some radiologists may just say, liver is abnormal, and I don't know why, clinical correlation is recommended. Sure, that's one thing. But you could also dive deeper and say, the liver looks abnormal, but based on the labs and patient presentation, I think it could be X or Y, and the following labs and imaging studies and tissue sampling would help clarify the diagnosis. All right, now what I did not like about radiology. The first thing is sitting in reading rooms. So the stereotype of diagnostic radiologists is that they sit in these dark reading rooms all day, staring at computer screens in near silence, or just simply dictating their readings. For those who don't know, the reading room is basically a dark room with fancy computer monitors where radiologists can read their images in a more ideal setting. Now, obviously that's not the full picture, and yes, they do do other things too, but the stereotype is there for a reason. This is often a substantial part of a diagnostic radiologist's day. All right, now, this isn't me trying to say that the reading room is this dark, scary place in the hospital. In fact, it's one of the cooler places because you're gonna find laid back people, they're listening to music, and they have these really cool setups. But it's just not the place for me and it's not how I envisioned a medical career. I want less time in front of computer screens and less time sitting, not more. Number two is patient care, or rather lack thereof. So there are two main drawbacks for me when looking at radiology from a patient-oriented perspective. The first of these is patient interactions. Now, while there are subspecialties within radiology that do give you more face-to-face -face time with patients, things like breast radiology and IR, a lot of time in radiology, both residency and in practice, is spent in the reading room as we just discussed. And even when you do get patient interaction, it's still pretty limited compared to other specialties. The second main drawback is your involvement in the patient's care. Again, this depends on your subspecialty of radiology, and it may not apply to the more procedure-heavy subspecialty of IR. As a diagnostic radiologist, you are essential to the patient's care by helping the primary team reach a diagnosis, but 
that's kind of where your role ends. You aren't involved in what happens after that, so you don't really get to treat patients. You also don't get the opportunity to develop any patient-doctor relationships because these patients are coming to you for this one specific test and usually that's it. Now sure, you do get some patient interaction with fluoro exams and ultrasound and interventional studies and nuclear studies, but just keep in mind that the level of patient interaction is way reduced compared to many other specialties. Also keep in mind that this drawback is sometimes overstated since patient interaction isn't a pure positive. While most patients, yeah, they're pleasant, there are a handful that are quite difficult or rude and they're gonna add more stress to your life. And if you're worried about being isolated, remember that you are interacting with physicians still. Next up is the training length. You're spending at least five years in residency to become a radiologist, which isn't as long as some other specialties. In fact, many surgical subspecialties are five to seven years as an example, but I always felt like five years felt a bit long for the field of radiology. Now that's obviously based on my limited knowledge of radiology, and I'm sure there's a good reason since radiology is such a detailed specialty requiring so much experience to do it properly. And of course that goes to a certain extent with any specialty, and I guess I'm just simply surprised that it takes five years for radiology. I do also think that part of this can be attributed to the fact that medical school does a poor job of preparing you for radiology. And I'm also guessing that part of the long training is that you need to have a massive knowledge base because you basically need to know the majority of things that can be seen on imaging, including the zebras. You'll learn details that usually only clinical subspecialists know. Things like the types of fibrotic lung disease or the types of fractures and not only cancers, but also which can or cannot be reasonably differentiated on imaging. Next up is unappreciative physicians. Now it's generally a pleasant experience interacting with other physicians, but not always. It's not terribly uncommon for your reads to sometimes be disregarded by the referring physician if they don't agree with you. Many specialists are reading their own scans and images and then using the radiologist as confirmation and to cover their ass and then shit talking the radiologists when they don't agree. While imaging is very important, the radiologist isn't always mission critical for certain decisions. You'll often see surgeons wheeling patients back to the OR based on their own reads before a radiologist even looks at the image. You see similar instances in the ICU and some neuro or stroke services too. Next up is the personality type. Diagnostic radiology seems better suited for introverts than extroverts and I'm slightly extroverted. I also saw that the Medscape Physician Lifestyle Unhappiness Report had radiology listed pretty low. Somewhere about 25% are satisfied with their job, and that's alarmingly low. Now first, of course, understand that the data is not perfect and it's a small, tiny sample size. Second, one possible reason for dissatisfaction is that imaging volume has exploded in recent years. Ultimately, any specialty is gonna be hard work, and you wanna choose the specialty where the reward energizes you. And when you love the ups, then the downs are much easier to endure. For some people, that means a full shift of lots of pathology and digital patients and helping your physician colleagues. It's not physically exhausting, but it can definitely be very mentally exhausting. It can be a grind going through images one after the other and feeling pressured to read more faster and faster. There isn't much ebb and flow to the day. You're just on and you'll get a break to eat, but right after it, you're back to being on and just cranking out readings for another several hours. And for me, the wins, the ups of radiology they weren't strong enough to draw me and overcome the drawbacks that I found with the specialty. That's ultimately what you want to decide for yourself when you're choosing a specialty, and it's what this series is all about. Many people can agree on some number of the pros and cons about a given specialty, but the relative importance and weight of each of those factors is gonna be highly personal. So maybe you and I agree that patient care is a drawback of radiology, but it's a six out of 10 for me and only a two out of 10 for you. So if that's the case, you're gonna find radiology much more appealing than me. Overall, with radiology, you get the joy of critical thinking and medical diagnosis. You get to avoid the pain of excessive administrative work and paperwork, but there's a price to pay and only you can decide whether or not the pros outweigh the cons. Check out the ultimate research course and use the coupon code WIDRADS for 20% off, link in the description. If you want to learn more about radiology, check out So You Want to Be a Radiologist or another specialty on the Why I Didn't playlist.